former Trump attorney Bill Brennan and former federal prosecutor Nima Romani. Uh, uh, Nima, I'd like to start with you. Um, Biden says Hunter was only prosecuted because he is his son, saying, quote, no reasonable person who looks at the facts of Hunter's cases can reach any other conclusion than Hunter was singled out only because he's my son, and that is wrong. Is there any merit to that argument? No, Elizabeth, I don't believe that for a second. He filed a vindictive selective prosecution motion that was denied. And although it's true that addict in possession is rarely charged by itself and most tax cases are resolved administratively through an audit or through civil fines, let's not forget Hunter Biden got a diversion deal, and that never happens in federal court. I put more than 1,000 people in federal prison, never once offered that. And guess what, Elizabeth? Joe Biden didn't decide this over Thanksgiving dinner. This was the plan the entire time. Why There's do you say no that? Doubt, there's no doubt in my mind because any lawyer, Hunter Biden's a lawyer, Joe Biden's a lawyer, Abby Lowell, Mark Garagos, who's been on this show, guess what they did? They turned down a gift diversion deal in Delaware. He was convicted of multiple felonies in an embarrassing way. And here in Los Angeles, they walked into court on the day of trial when the jury was present and they pleaded open to the indictment. They accepted all the charges in the case. It's very rare for a criminal defendant to do that because they always negotiate some sort of plea, yeah. dropping some of the charges, reducing the sentence. They knew they had a pardon lined up. That's why they acted the way they did. Otherwise, it makes no rational sense, Elizabeth. Yeah, uh, and, and, and Bill, what do you make of the sweeping nature of this pardon? He's not just saying, never mind that a jury found my son guilty, never mind that my son s stood before a judge and pled guilty. He's also saying, never mind anything he may or may not have done over a 10-year period of time. Well, Elizabeth, I think it's kind of uh, under the umbrella of go big or go home. He could have, you know, if he was sentenced, he could have commuted the sentence. But that's kind of the fake Rolex of clemency. If, if you're going to give a pardon, and you're going to take the heat, you might as well give a pardon like President Biden gave his son, which is from January of 14 through uh, December of 24, any and all, uh, committed or, or not committed. I mean, it is as sweeping a pardon as uh, one could have, akin to the Gerald Ford pardon of President Nixon. But it is important to remember that, as you pointed out earlier, this action is certainly not unprecedented. The 16th president, arguably our greatest president, Abraham Lincoln, pardoned his sister-in-law. President Carter, I believe, pardoned his brother. As you pointed out earlier, President Clinton pardoned his brother for drug trafficking charges at a time when he was actively being investigated for trading favors uh, for access uh, by Congress. Uh, and, of course, the President Trump pardoned of Mr. Kushner. So this is not unprecedented. And... Uh, one of your guests earlier, uh, or, or perhaps it was you mentioned the prodigal son. You know, that you have me. to separate. I, I thought about that too. Uh, Chris said earlier that you know he, he really shouldn't do it because he's the president. I see it quite like the 180 of that. He really has to do it because only he can do it. And how do you not pardon your son? I just I I, I never believe there was a scenario where he would not pardon Hunter Biden. He did it. I, I, I called it earlier. I, I understand it as a father of a lot of kids. I, I, I just can't fault him for it. And I think about that, that passage from the prodigal son when the, when the dutiful son takes on the father and said, what are you kidding me? I've been working this land for 20 years. He goes running off and now comes back. He said, you don't understand. I had a son who was lost and now he's found. Yeah. Uh, Where Nima Biden messed up, Elizabeth, as he spoke too much. He said something like, no reasonable person could look at this evidence and conclude, no, nah, that's ridiculous. Twelve jurors did that. They did. And they <laughs> they and, looked and at the, the evidence and they said guilty. It's, it's not a defense. Yeah. The, the addiction, sad as it is, it's a mitigator. It is not a defense. Nima, how much time was Hunter facing in a, in a matter of days when he was due to be sentenced? Well, he was looking at more than a year in the Delaware gun case and more than two years in 
the California tax case. So we're talking about significant time here and really not much evidence of mitigation. This isn't someone that accepted any responsibility in Delaware. And certainly, although he paid his back taxes, we know that's not a legal defense. So he was writing off expenses for drugs and prostitutes and escorts and pornography. So I could see Mark Scarzi, especially the judge here in Los Angeles, who I used to work with, actually giving him some time because it would be a significant deviation from the federal sentencing guidelines. To and not and, and so. then uh, literally 10 seconds. Um, what does this do? Does this give ammunition to those Republicans who've been holding all these hearings all this time looking for dirt? Uh, and, and illegal acts uh, by Hunter Biden. Um, they weren't able to find any. Um, just a lot of unsavory behavior and trading on your family name and trying to cash in on my dad as VP. Um, but doesn't this kind of, this sweeping pardon give some ammunition to Republicans saying there is something there? Otherwise, why pardon him? It does. Just one point. I think Hunter Biden can still assert the fifth because he's potentially facing state charges. The, the pardon, of course, just applies to federal charges. So they can't the drag him in and force him to testify. Well, they can, but he's going to plead the fifth, and I think he has the right to do so. All right. Uh, Bill Brennan, Nemo Romani, uh, always great talking to both of you. Bill, you have the best line of the night so far, the fake Rolex of clemency. <laughs> It's brilliant. I'm glad you like that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. Bye-bye, Elizabeth. Thanks. Take bye, care. Bye, bye, Elizabeth.